Tuesday 24th of August. It's a breezy sunny day with some cloud as well. Unfortunately this morning I won't get time to go for a walk before work as I'm starting a little bit early but uh, as I get my breaks throughout the day I'll uh, take you with me and see if we can find anything. So I've just checked on the small tortoiseshell butterfly that roosted in here last night. It seems to have made its way out okay. I left the window open for it just in case. So I don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to bring the moth trap in. I won't get time to check it straight away. I've already switched the lights off. I'll bring that in and I can check that shortly. Good morning, how are you? You good today? No eggs yet? Okay, I'll keep on waiting. Okay, so I'm just going to take a look inside the moth trap. You can see there's some in there already. That's a canary shouldered thorn right there, I can tell you. Now, I won't video the whole thing because the moths will all try and escape. So if I get anything really interesting, I'll show you after. So there's the canary shouldered thorn. Now, this one isn't actually a moth. It's a type of caddis fly. There's quite a few types of caddis fly that look quite similar, so I'll have to check this one out. This one's a pale prominent. It almost looks like a piece of snap stick, doesn't it? A piece of wood. Good camouflage. This lovely one here with intricate patterns on its wings, that's a common rustic. So this big beauty is a male gypsy moth. The females are white and they're quite chunky and their wings aren't quite big enough for them to be able to fly. So the males seek them out with those comb-like or almost feather-like antennae there that they use to sense the female's pheromones. It's a nice looking moth. And here we have another species of caddis fly. As I said before, there's lots that are very similar, so I need to check this out. This one's got a quite distinctive colour, so that should be an easy ID. Lastly, here we have a species of ermine moth. They're all very similar, so I'll have to check which species this is. They're all white and they have rows of black spots along their wings. Now, there were some other moths in here, but I decided not to show you them all. So I've just shown you some of the most interesting ones for now. Here's a nice green lace wing on the balcony. It seems to have narrowly escaped the spider's webs there. Oh yeah, I've just come out of my lunch break and I'm just going to have a look around the lake and maybe the fields at the back. In particular, I'm going to be looking for migrant passerines. Uh, there's also a few golds coming through at the moment, so I'll try that on the big lake. Juvenile house sparrows feed in there. There's quite a few more gulls on the big lake now. These are mostly all black-headed gulls. With a few lesser blackbacks and juvenile herring gulls. You can just hear the calls of a juvenile chief chaff in there. Not that, that's a child screaming. We're listening for Barrel hook up there. Nice flash of white underneath there as it caught the sun. Got some baby moor hens down here with mum and dad. Up there, 
two red kites, in fact. So there must be a wasp's nest in there because there's loads of wasps going in now. I should be okay as long as I don't breathe on them, move too quickly, I'll scare them in any other way. In fact, you can just about see the hole they're going into. So you've got an underground nest there. Now just looking at these wasps near me here, these are common wasps. The other wasp that's very similar to these that we have is the German wasp. Now just as I've come around this corner, a common sandpiper has flown off of this bank here and headed off in this direction, just behind the islands here. Now there's loads of small patches here which would be great for common sandpiper with these um, sort of shallow muddy banks. Um, so it could be pretty tricky to find, but we'll, uh, we'll have a look through the little passageway there and look across onto the bank on the far side and see if we can get a view of it. So the places I'm likely to find the common sandpiper are those islands there. There's a little bank on the far side there. And there's a bit more of a, a beachy bank on that side. So I'm just going to scan those areas and see if I can pick it out. So no sign of the common sandpiper so far, but I have just found something that I haven't seen here in some while. Just look there, that little blob on the bank on the other side that's a yellow bellied slider so that's the terrapin family it's related to the red eared terrapin it's a commonly kept pet and unfortunately when they get too big people do release them illegally into the wild now they could have an effect on the ecosystem it hasn't been studied thoroughly but it's not something that one should do there's unknown consequences of releasing a, an exotic pet into the wild. I'll go around into one of the other gaps just to my left hand side here and we'll see if we can get a closer view. Now we'll have to tread quietly because it's actually quite shy. I've seen it before and just from a bit of movement from this side it has dipped into the water. There he is. I've got him. Try and take some photos of him so I can show you a bit of a better view. There he is, yellow bellied slider. You can actually see the yellow belly there and a little tiny tail. Now there's a patch of willow herb here. Oh, did you see that? Uh, that was a holly blue butterfly just flew past and a southern hawk or dragonfly. Sorry. Um, Willow herb is a good food plant for elephant hawk moths. So let's just take a look here. I'm looking for the caterpillars, which are quite large, they're about as big as your finger. And the reason they're called elephant hawk moths is because the caterpillar is quite big and fat but the head can protrude like a elephant's trunk. In fact, I've just seen one. I'm sure if you can see that. There it is. It has the markings on the top above the head, which look almost like eyes. And that's to scare off predators. It looks quite frightening. It almost looks like a snake. They are 
leave him be. You'll notice the flowers of the food plants of the elephant hook moth caterpillar are um, usually pink, so willow herbs, fuchsia for instance. And that would be the reason for the adult moths being that pink or fuchsia colour. So they can blend right in when they're laying their eggs on the food plant. Okay, now this little patch earlier on in the year was very good for uh, broad-bodied chaser dragonflies. It was also alive with damselflies, um, demoiselles. Um, it's also the only place I've been able to find hairy dragonfly here, but that was much earlier on in the year. But let's see if there's anything still about. It's actually um, a feeder stream from the River Tame into the lakes at Watermead. But when the water level's high, as you can see, the water doesn't actually move much. It's pretty much still water. And there's lots of emergent vegetation. Uh, there's often um, floating vegetation earlier in the year. So this is a great spot for dragonflies and damselflies. So let's just take a look. There's a southern hawker. Okay, so I've just seen an emerald damselfly. And that foliage just over there on the other side. Now it's a bit far to show you with the camera, but if I can take some shots with my DSLR, I should be able to show you after. Okay, that's the emerald damselfly. Look at those bright blue eyes. That's a beauty, that. Right, this willow tree is absolutely full of willow emerald damselflies. There's a few mating pairs. There's one actually a branch in the middle of the shot there. Probably almost impossible to see. It's green against the green foliage behind. I'll take some shots and show you. So here are the mating willow emerald damselflies. I bet that's quite hard to see because the uh, sun on the camera and the uh, damselflies themselves are green, but there's the male. It's connected to the back of the neck there on the female. And one easy feature to help identify uh, willow emerald is the fact that the spot on the wing there is um, pale in the center. There's some ovipositing darters there. There's both um, common data and ruddy data here. There's, there's a common data. There's a brown hawker that's just landed over there. I'm going to try and get a photo. So I'm not sure if you can see that with the light shining on the camera, but there's the brown hawker resting on some purple loose strife. It's one of my favourite dragonflies. It's one of the only ones with uh, some colour to its wings. It's got a real coppery sheen on them. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see the uh, lovely blue. It looks almost like it's glowing on the eyes there. Okay, so I was just about to leave this spot and I've just seen a grass snake slithering in the water underneath that overhanging grass there. Now I can only just see it with a naked eye. It's face through the gap, so I'm sure you can't see it on the footage. So I'll, um, I'll just take some shots for you. And now actually it's on the bank now. It's gonna be almost impossible to point out just on the bank there, that dark patch. There's like a dark hole there, and just below it, that's the snake. Okay, so the grass snake seems to be sunbathing now. It's just in that patch, just there, laid on top of the grass. And it moved in very discreetly along the edge of the water here, and up into that patch. Like it's just moving now. 
Let me see if I can get it on there for you. Just there. So here are some pics of the grass snake. There it is kind of laid out on the grass where it stayed for some time. Now, I'm not sure if you can see in this shot, but that little shiny bit there is actually its tongue. So it's flicking its tongue in traditional snake style. Here it is peeking through the grass. So even if you don't get a good view of the grass snake, this yellow colour is an immediate giveaway, even at distance that's obvious. This one's actually got quite an orange tone to it. It's a nicely coloured one. Okay, so that was a good little stop off. Not only did we get the grass snake, plenty of dragonfly and damselfly species. So we had um, southern hawker, brown hawker, and then there we had common data and uh, ruddy data. There was also banded demoiselle, um, common blue damselfly, blue tailed damselfly, um, but the best ones were uh, willow emeralds damselfly, including some mating pairs, and also the um, the usual emerald damselfly, which actually I do see less often than the uh, willow emerald damselfly, even though the willow emerald is a fairly recent addition to the UK list. Um, it was first seen in the UK in the early 2000s. So um, it's great to see that their population is expanding and it's doing particularly well in Buckinghamshire. Okay, so I'm on my way back from a lunch break now. Um, there were so many dragonflies there that I actually saw a hobby come through hunting on dragonflies, uh, feeding itself in the air like I saw yesterday, which was good to see. Uh, also walking through the little woodland there, I could hear some bullfinches. They've got young in there at the moment and um, also a tree creeper, which uh, I don't see here very often. Um, the few sightings I have had of tree creeper have all been in the winter. Um, so I wonder if these are just recently dispersed birds, uh, maybe youngsters that have spread out from where they breed locally. Um, so I'm gonna head back now and um, hopefully we'll get some time out this evening and um, we can have a wander around the lake then. I didn't get any time to go over the fields at the back but um, actually maybe that's something we can do later. Okay, so we have here what seems to be a queen common cardiby. It's a big one. Mm. Enjoying the lavender I've got on my balcony here. Okay, so I've finished work now. So I'm making the most of being out slightly sooner than yesterday. So I'm just gonna try the, uh, the fields at the back of the estate and the uh, the corner up there where we uh, found the spotted flycatchers yesterday. Um, maybe we'll find some other migrant passerines. Um, it's a bit cooler now than it was earlier. I can also hear in the background over there that the uh, farmer is either ploughing or cutting uh, one of the fields up there, which means it will probably give us give us some uh, decent habitat for finding migrant wheat ears in the next few days, which would be great. So anyway, let's see what we can find. Unfortunately, there's no uh, spotted flycatchers on this patch today, so they might have moved on, but there is uh, quite a few warblers just in these bushes here, and uh, they're even flycatching from the perches that the uh, flycatchers were flycatching from. Uh, we've got some juvenile willow warblers and chiff chaffs in here. Uh, there's a black cap, and also a female white throat in here. In fact, there's a juvenile willow warbler right now. It's about there. Probably can't see that. There's one of the juvenile willow warblers. Lovely lemon yellow color. It's just the juveniles in the autumn that are actually that yellow color. There's a small white. So I've just seen a blood vein moth fly and land down here in the grass. It's a very pretty moth, it's only very subtle. It's like a pale, sandy colour. But it's got a rosy red line that runs across both wings. 
Let me see if I can get a bit closer for you. There it is in there. It's very pretty. Let's see if we can get this grasshopper that we can hear in here. You can see my shadow moving, that's why it stopped. I can see it there. It's actually a Roselle's bush cricket. Now I said on uh, my last video I'd try and find this for you. I'm gonna try and get it on camera. Excuse the pun, they're quite jumpy. Just have to adjust the brightness slightly to see if you can see it. It's got that very distinctive marking on the side there, like a white U with a black background. Not sure if you can see that, but that's a migrant hawker dragonfly. Now look at the amazing colour of these slowberries. Bluish purple. They've almost frosted on the outside. So they're related to the plums. The uh, frosting on the outside is like a wax. Inside they're a bit more of a almost aubergine colour. Right, so I've just found a male common blue butterfly, which might not sound that unusual, but it's only the second one I've ever seen at Watermead. It's a stunning blue colour. It's feeding on this ragwort here. Very pretty underwing pattern as well. Nope, oh, there he goes. There's a shot of the common blue. You can see the lovely underwing pattern there also. A lot of the blue butterflies are very similar, but the configuration of those dots and circles on the underwing can be a good indicator as to which species you're looking at. It's so often just taking a photo if you're unsure means that you can go back and refer those dots under the wing later and the pattern will tell you which species you're looking at. There's a couple of buzzards up there together. Here we've got a plum tree absolutely loaded with plums. Here we have some absolutely stunning mallow flowers. And that color is gorgeous. To the eye, they're quite pink, but the, uh, the camera picks up, I presume it's the reflective UV. There's some poppies still in flower here and there. They're always a joy to see. Most around here had gone by about the beginning of August, but seems to be some still hanging on. Okay, so I've just seen a hobby blast across this field here, hunting dragonflies and head back off over here behind me. I didn't get time to get it on video. I wanted to get some shots with my camera because it was fairly close. But this area here seems to be where they're hunting most at the moment. So when I'm viewing from across the lake or in the little wood over there and I see the hobbies hunting, it's always over this way. So I'm thinking that these fields over here where the River Tame comes through might be where they're holding territory at the moment. Not breeding territory, but post-breeding dispersal um, and they're holding this territory for feeding because there's a lot of dragonflies here. Also over the lake, uh, we get a lot of house martins, sometimes sand martins and swallows, which of course is their other food source. 
There are other prey items. So I'm just going to check out over here, see if we can get any other views. I can see some red kites over there in the air. Um, let's see if we get any more luck. There's the hobby blasting past. What a stunning bird that is. Look at the uh, concentration in its eyes. The focus. Now going by the colour of the, what you call trousers there, on the underbelly. This is a different bird to the one I saw yesterday because that was much more of a deep red. Here we have some cuckoo pints, also known as lords and ladies. Whatever you do, don't eat those berries, they are poisonous. If you eat these, you can get severe swelling and pain in the mouth and throat, and the swelling in the throat can cause breathing difficulty. You can see just here, this hole is a passageway that a mammal is using regularly. Judging by the shape and height of that, I'd say that's a uh, munt jack. Okay, so I've just seen a juvenile lesser white throat in this crabapple tree here. The first thing was on view quite nicely at the front and it's jumped to the top and it's just uh, moving around up there. It did briefly pop over to that tree there and pop its head up a little bit. I managed to get a couple of shots just as it was peeking over the top. There's the juvenile lesser white throat just poking its head out from the hawthorn. Hawthorn is actually where you're probably most likely to see lesser white throat. They seem to like to breed in Hawthorn. Okay, so I'm going to head back through the estate now. We're going to just walk through the houses, through to the little woodland on the north side of the large lake. We'll have a wander through there and then we'll head to the large lake where at this time in the evening we could potentially get some nice gulls coming. This is one of the signs put up by Watermead Parish Council about the wildlife around the lake. It could probably do with some updating and also some corrections. Um, great crested grebe, a picture of a black neck grebe there. Black headed gull, a picture of a herring gull there. Muscovy duck was a species that used to be found here, a uh, feral population some years ago. Haven't been seen here for some time now. Um, obviously we know that there's a lot more to be seen here. Um, here's the map. So I'll show you where we are. We're just here now. We have been over in the fields here just now and earlier on over this way so we're going to head through this little woodland come out onto the large lake here this is where the jetty is we're going to look for gulls coming into the lake here and then see where we go from there i'm thinking i might design a new sign for the parish council with uh, some of the other wildlife as well as uh, some updates to the birds on here So that's the call of juvenile chiff chaff. Here we are back at the large lake. It's a bit breezy out here now. Here's our friendly herring gold, one with the pink ring. In the same spot as before. Tail just went over. Okay, so the juvenile common goal that we saw here yesterday is out there today. It's uh, coming this evening 
dipped into the water, had a little bit of a, a wash, flown around, done some circuits, dipped down. Um, I'll see if I can get some shots of it to show you. There's also three gadwell over there, and I've just heard a kingfisher uh, go into those trees there again. They're a bit shy here, so they don't sit out in the open that much. I think it's because there's so many people. So it would be uh, tricky for me to show you, uh, but that's something I'm going to try and get a decent shot of. I've not actually managed to get any decent photos of a kingfisher since I've been here this last two years. But I'll keep trying. Okay, so I'm making my way back to the small lake now, just crossing the rough meadow. Nice break from the wind here. This field is absolutely alive with grasshoppers. Look at this ant's nest. It's like a perfect pyramid. Three gads will just flew over as I was crossing the meadow. I presume these are the same three that I've just seen over on the large lake. They were probably unsettled by something and did a lap and they're heading back now. There's a lot of field grasshoppers in this field. Here's some just down here. There's a seven spot ladybird. And these stunning teasels. These ones are about seven foot tall. There's a grey heron preening on the island over there. So I'm back home now. I'm just going to say hi to this one. Hey, how you doing? You've had a good day? Good. Look at that stunning sky. Those are cirrus clouds. Beautiful. Okay, so I have some moths to let back outside that seem to have come in and stayed in from yesterday night. I've just emerged from places in my living room. This is a large yellow underwing. And this is the other one, a stunning Jersey tiger moth. So it came to the moth trap last night. It must have found its way inside. See if we can see the, uh, the red hind wings there. Okay, so let's let the Jersey tiger moth free. Probably could just fly straight back in. Up it goes. What a beautiful evening. So we've let the moths go that were stuck indoors, that were probably attracted to the moth trap last night. I've let them have some time to get further away from the flat so they're not the same moths attracted to the moth trap again. So I'm just going to switch it back on. go and let's see what comes tonight okay I've just come to check on the moth trap it's only been out for about half an hour and it already looks like it's gonna be a good night for brimstone moths there's two here together they are stunning aren't they one of my favorites Just looking at the many spiders across my balcony and on these doors here, I've just noticed this beautiful bridge spider, also known as the grey cross spider. That's a stunner. Okay, so I'm going to leave the moth trap to do its thing now. Um, I need to close these doors because there's far too many uh, mosquitoes coming in. So um, we'll check on this in the morning and I'll post that in the next video. Almost forgot. One more thing, like the video if you like it, let me know if you don't, 
and subscribe to the channel because then you'll get to see the next video as it's released. Take care, bye bye.